Hey guys, today's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna talk about the Amazon rainforest and the fires, which has been all over the news for the last few weeks. Now, first of all, the fires are a massive problem and we should be concerned. But not for the reasons we seem to be concerned. And especially not for the reasons that most people are talking about. But please, watch till the end, I do come into the reasons that we actually should be concerned. But I'm first going to cover all the reasons that really doesn't make sense. Now, first of all, this is an ecological disaster. The Amazon is home to an estimated 10% of all life on the planet and probably thousands of species that we still haven't discovered yet and potentially never will. The Amazon rainforest is probably the single most important forest on the planet when it comes to wildlife and who knows what else we simply haven't found yet. Maybe, who knows, the cure for cancer could be in there. We just don't know yet because it is so vast. But what have we gotten wrong then, you might ask? And I'm going to tell you. And of course, I'm going to leave links to my sources down in the description so you can double check. Point one, the Amazon is the lungs of the planet. And the Amazon produces 20% of the world's oxygen. Both is, is, makes no sense. Well, one of them could make sense, but, but the lungs? The lungs are not producers of oxygen. They use it. Therefore, calling it the lungs is actually a really ridiculous concept. I do understand what the point is, but it's stupid. Now for the 20% oxygen production. This is a common myth. It's based on a mathematical error someone made a long time ago. Now, of course, if we lost 20% of the world's oxygen production, that would be a massive issue. You know, It would be devastating, wouldn't it? If it wasn't for the fact that it's not 20% because when they did the math, they forgot the massive part of the world. Well, I'm not sure they forgot it as much as they made the calculation based on land-based production of oxygen, which means forest, individual trees, all, all the green stuff. They forgot that two-thirds of the planet is covered by water. And this is actually the main producer of oxygen for the entire planet. It is such a big producer that if we cut down the entire Amazon, we probably wouldn't notice the oxygen difference at all. We could go millions of years before we would notice a drop in oxygen. So in real life, it's actually closer to 5-6% to of the entire amount of oxygen that the world produces. And again, this is based on the entirety. But in fact, most forests are a zero-sum game, which means they produce a certain amount of oxygen, but they also use almost the exact same amount of oxygen through dead plant materials, animals, microbes, insects. So in the end, if we lost the forest, we'd also lose all of the wildlife and such that use the oxygen and therefore it would be a zero-sum game. So we should not be worried about that and it's a horrible argument in itself because it's so easily disputed. So let's use a different argument. Another argument I've heard over the last few weeks is that the Amazon is on the verge of collapse. I mean, there's been articles about this, but this is wildly inaccurate because we are not sure. The most pessimistic estimates in any research paper I've been able to find estimates that if we cut down 25% of the Amazon, it could collapse. Now in real life, we haven't actually even cut down 20% yet. We're getting close to 20%, but we haven't cut down 20%. Which means that over 50 years of intense logging, and right now it's actually slowing down quite considerably, we have not devastated the forest closely enough. We would have a long lot time before this happens. Especially when you consider that most scientists believe that the number should be closer to 40%, which means we're not even halfway. So the forest is not on the verge of collapse. It can still recover from our terrible, terrible actions. But it is still something we should remember that we have the power to destroy it. And we should probably take that into consideration and try to avoid doing that. The third claim I've heard is that the Amazon has the biggest storage of CO2 in the world. That is again, not completely true we forget about the oceans and the ocean sediments at the bottom. There's a much bigger storage going on down there than there ever will be in the Amazon. Now, what makes the Amazon interesting and important and something we should worry about is a completely different thing. 
because it is the second largest on the planet, the largest on land. What we should consider is most of the CO2 in the tropical forests, like the Amazon, is stored in the plant material. So by chopping it down, we are releasing the CO2. That is completely different from more northern forests, where it's mostly covered in the ground sediments and such. Therefore, we should worry about it. But at worst, if we cut down the entire forest, again, worst case scenario, it would increase the CO2 levels by about 10%. In the short run, it would be pretty bad, but as it is a one-time event, it probably wouldn't screw the planet over completely. It is still terrible, and it still comes with a range of other problems, but again, we're not even close to it yet. Now, the point number four a lot of people are claiming is that the fires are natural. That's a load of bull. In a way, I blame NASA and their miscommunication when they made a statement about this. They said the, the following, It is not uncommon to see fires in Brazil at this time of the year, and we will have to wait to see if it remains within the norm. That is a statement that is correct and wrong at the same time, because it insinuates that it's normal and it's natural. But it's not natural, it's just normal. It's a big difference. Because natural fires in the Amazon are quite rare. It's not a forest that usually has a lot of fires. And when they do have fires, they're usually quite small. They never reach the canopy. While these fires that are blazing right now, and most of the time, are massive, destructive, and you know, nothing survives in its path. Those are man-made fires that was illegal. And there are many ways to prevent that. It's, it's a big difference. Problem is just, they are so normal. The amount of fires being set in the Amazon is completely insane. And it has happened for the last 50 years. We just gave a crap this year. That's the big difference. Now stupid argument number five. This one came from the mouth of the Brazilian president himself, Jair Bolsonaro. He said, because the G7 came out and said they wanted to give 20 million to support. And the French president had then just, you know, insulted the man. Fair enough, he's not a very likable character for most people. He's still the president though. Like some of us had to deal with Trump, we have to deal with him too. He said that it would be better to plant trees in Europe. Now, when you consider all of the points I've basically just talked about, that is a bullcrap argument because planting the trees will not make that big of a difference when it comes to CO2 or oxygen it will make a difference in the local wildlife area so that's great you know and we're already planting a lot of trees in europe so um well done of asking us to do what we're already doing fine the argument falls apart the second when you realize this because no matter how many trees there's planted in europe or north america it will not create the biodiversity of the amazon it will not create a safe place for the parrots the reptiles, the mammals, the microbes, the insects, the, all of them, they will not have a home here in Europe. They will have a home in the Amazon. And if you destroy that home, you destroy them. That is the only real argument you'd think there is, right? But there's actually one more. Amazon is actually a massive contributor to the stability of the Western Hemisphere's climate. That's right, the Amazon is more important than just locally. The true value of the forest lies right here in climate stability. As we have been deforesting, as we have been cutting down the Amazon, Brazil themselves has realized they have experienced more and more droughts because the biggest reason for rain in South America is the Amazon. They're tearing it down Therefore, there's not being produced as much rain, and therefore, the agricultural land that they're trying to expand by cutting down the forest is actually counterproductive as they destroy more than they gain simply by the lack of rain. And to make it worse, it won't just affect Brazil and the immediate area, it's going to affect all of the Western Hemisphere because a lot of the moisture created by the forest is picked up into the air and then blown across the Caribbean into the middle of the United States. Here it will meet the cold air from the Rocky Mountains. It's actually very interesting. It produces, among other things, one of the major reasons for tornadoes in this area, but also rain. 
which means the United States will also be affected by it. Canada will be affected by it. That is the extent of the importance of this one forest, just in climate. It, it also keeps Brazil relatively cool for where it is. And all of this is something we're taking very easy compared to what we're acting crazy about. Everybody's going crazy about the oxygen. We should go nuts about all the other things. I still want us to go crazy because this forest is important. I have no idea how massively important it is, to be honest. It is probably even more, and we won't know until we've gone too far. The question is just, can we actually go too far, or will the destruction that happens to us be greater so by the time we actually did reach the tipping point of the forest, did we destroy ourselves in the process? That's the question. Now what can we actually do about it? Are we just sitting here? With our hands tied and say, oh well, shit happens. We got screwed and the go it's all the government's fault because they didn't do anything about it. No, we can do a lot. Even on a local level, just you know, one person can make a difference. Because it starts with one person. And what can we do? Well, since that most of my viewers, most of you guys and me, we're in the Western world. We're in Europe and America. We are the main reason... For what's happening to an Amazon. A lot of people blame the Brazilians. I don't. A lot of them are quite poor and they see a market to supply our demands. We're demanding the products being produced here. So we should stay away from the products. We should look up what is being produced in these regions and say maybe I shouldn't buy that because it's destroying the forest. It's the same you know you go vegan or vegetarian and you're all, I am so grateful for the environment, and then and then one of the main food sources you have are avocados, which, because of the demand, is actually helping destroy large swaths of farmland. It's the same with almonds. It's probably better than eating beef, but it's still not the best solution. Best solution is to buy local. That's the first one. Buy local. Even if you eat meat, you know, buy local produced meat. Those are the things you can do. Now, what do you guys think? What do you guys think you can do? Please leave a comment in the comment section telling me what could we do on a you know individual level that would help improve the environment we're in, the climate, or prevent reasons to actually burn down the Amazon. What could we do as an individual that would limit the need for this destruction? Please let me know in the comments. And uh, if you liked the video, please uh, leave a like. Maybe even subscribe a little. And uh, until then, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.